Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Bell SRT Modular Flip Front Helmet. Bell's SRT Modular is one of the few flip fronts on the market that's closely based on a regular full face helmet. When Bell launched this SRT modular, they also released the straight SRT at the same time, and that's a helmet we covered last year in a review video of its own. So that regular full face SRT is no longer in Bell's range, but the flip front version has survived. The two helmets were really very similar with the obvious exception of that chin bar flip operation, but it still shows the sporty intention behind the SRT modular. The shell for the main helmet section is fiberglass and the chin bar is plastic, just as the chin bars on pretty much every flip front helmet ever have been plastic. Bell say in their literature for this helmet that it's lightweight. On our scales, this one, size medium, comes in at 1,770 grams. Personally, I wouldn't say that's light, and if a light lid is your primary focus, then there are quite a few other flip fronts that come in lighter than this one. But it's not a beast either. It's definitely not the heaviest flip front around, and in my experience, it carries its weight pretty damn well out on the road. The lifting lever for the chin bar sits at the tip of the chin bar just here. You push it away from you and that frees the front of the lid to be able to lift it up. In its uppermost position it rests quite securely which stops it accidentally slipping back down and blocking your view. But it's worth pointing out that the SRT modular is single homologated as a full face helmet. And that means it can only be legally worn with the chin bar closed. Now one thing I have noticed while I'm out and about in this lid, you get two clicking sounds when closing the chin bar. The first is when the two parts of the locking mechanism meet up and then the second firmer click is when they engage and lock together. It's worth making sure you've given the chin bar a good firm pull to get the two to engage fully. The venting on this lid is inspired by the SRT road helmet and it's actually pretty effective. The chin vent slides open and lets air flow through two inlets on the front and then through the top of the chin bar to ventilate the eye port. Up top, there's another single slider just here that again reveals two holes that come down inside the helmet. There are then channels through the EPS impact liner that allow that air to circulate towards the back of the lid and then come out through these exhaust vents, which are always open. So I found the venting to be pretty decent on this helmet. Again, when I was out and about riding in it, in my experience though, this SRT modular is pretty breezy anyway. And I found it wasn't so crucial to have the vents open as quite a bit of air was able to circulate inside even when they were shut. The visor on this lid is quick release and it's dead simple to change. You just push this button, slide it forward to release it, and then you reverse that process to put it back on. It lifts and lowers from this central tab just here, and there are four positions. You get fully up, you get partially up for a good flow of air, you get it cracked just there for a small amount, and then fully locked home. The visor gives good breadth and depth of vision, and it's protected against mist by Pinlock 120 insert, which is their highest grade. I never had an issue at all with misting from the visor, even when riding in some really grotty weather. And that's one of the benefits of good airflow inside the helmet at all times. It'll help keep any condensation from forming on the inside of the visor and also on the pin lock itself. As an aside, this visor is shared with Bell's race helmets, which means that you can also get a light reactive pro tint visor to fit this helmet. Now one of those will automatically tint when it's exposed to daylight. It's a great thing to have that on a helmet, but it is a bit of a luxury at a price of 150 quid for just the visor as we record this video. It's not essential anyway, as the SRT modular comes with a drop down sun visor. It operates on this sliding switch on the left rim. And then when you want it closed up, you give it a firmer push on the last piece of travel. It keeps it more securely in its raised position. That visor has a good level of drop and it reaches almost as far as this breath guard, which again, that breath guard is another sporty touch that's not common on flip front helmets. So Bell don't include in their specification whether the sun visor is coated to protect against mist, but I didn't suffer any fogging issues at all when riding in this helmet, and I wore this on some days where I really would have expected a sun visor to mist if it didn't have a coating. Moving to the inside, this helmet's got a plush liner that's covered with a brushed material around the top of the head and then a lighter fabric on the cheek pads and around the forehead. It's all antibacterial to help stop it getting whiffy, and it's very easy to take it out and put it back into the helmet again. Behind that lining, there are recesses for intercom speakers and they're way bigger than the ones you get on most helmets. I fitted a pair of Cardo PacTalk Bold speakers in there with a 40 millimeter diameter and there was loads of room left over. So if you're tempted to ask in the comments of this video whether a certain intercom will fit this helmet, then I really wouldn't bother. The answer will be yes, as these recesses are absolutely massive. I fitted the whole PacTalk Bold system to this lid with absolute ease 
and I'm certain it would be exactly the same with any Senna system. It was really simple to fit. The final detail with the interior, but it's a really important one all the same, is that the strap fastens with this micrometric buckle just here. So before I finish up, let's deal with sizing, approvals, and price. The SRT modular comes in sizes extra small through to triple XL. That biggest head size covers a 66 centimeter head. There are two shell sizes to cover that range. Helmets from extra small up to large go in the smaller of the two shells, and then lid sizes XL and above go in the bigger shell. There are two different sizes of EPS impact liner for the smaller of those two shells. One covers extra small and small, and the other covers medium and large. So if you have a small head, you know it's not just a huge lid that's been padded out with foam to fit your head, as there's a bigger EPS liner in there to help bring it down to your size. But I would say this is a size medium, and it's quite big externally. So if you're of small build and you've got a small head as well, then this is likely to look quite big on top of your shoulders. In terms of approvals, this helmet meets ECE 2205 for the road. Like most flip fronts, it's not been approved by the ACU for track use, and neither has it been tested by the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. On to price. As we record this video, the SRT modular starts at £259.99 and goes up to £279.99 depending on the colour scheme. I really liked wearing this lid, I found the fit to be plush, the venting works well and the sun visor is effective. In ropey weather it kept my vision clear which is something I couldn't say of all flip fronts, even the ones that have got a pin lock insert fitted. That price of around 260 quid makes this lid a decent option in the mid price bracket as far as I'm concerned. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Bell SRT modular helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.